If you were a guild master during the Middle Ages, what would you give as alms to the poor and needy and the monks? Would it be gold? Would it be food? Would it be wealth? Would it be comfort? Or would it be ale? Ale, ale for everyone, I say. Or at least that is what the master of the Merchants Guild of Southampton felt. As in the ordinances of the Merchants Guild of Southampton from the 13th century, it reads, Whenever the guild is in session, it shall give, as alms, eight gallons of ale to the leper hospital of Le Madeline and eight gallons of ale to the patients at the hospital of St. Julian, also known as God's House. The local Franciscan friars shall receive eight gallons of ale and four gallons of wine. Sixteen gallons of ale shall be given as alms to the poor of Southampton every time the guild meets. Now to us, that might seem as quite some amount of ale, and especially odd as something to give us alms. And so us these days, we look at alcohol often as an intoxicating drink that may loosen of inhibitions, but also can lead to many problems and struggles, and some even viewed as a poison. During Victorian times, alcohol was seen as a blight to the poor, something that would concern the well-working poor that could work their way up into drunkards and m terrible people causing problems and messes and, and all sorts of trouble and destruction. But apparently that was very, very different during the Middle Ages. As you can see here, as they gave ale and wine as alms. We can see in other medieval sources that alcoholic drinks were viewed in a positive light, very positive light to be exact. In the book of Marvels and Travels, attributed to Mandeville, even though Mandeville most likely was not a specific individual, we can see that this character Mandeville does not understand why Muslims would prohibit the drinking of alcohol. He attributes it to their strange behavior and also gives strange and insulting story. That one time Muhammad was visiting his favorite mentor, who his friends were very jealous of because of how much time he spent with him. And after having much to drink, Muhammad passed out. That then his friends murdered the mentor with Muhammad's sword, and when Muhammad woke up, they blamed it on Muhammad, saying that he did it while he was drunk. And that because of that, he cursed alcohol, and now, Muslims prohibit the drinking of it. Though this story sounds rather ridiculous. But from this and from the giving of alcohol's alms, we can see that in the Middle Ages they must have viewed alcohol as in some way beneficial to man. And in some way helping individuals who were in poor straits. Maybe they viewed the ability of it as loosening of inhibitions as aiding people in acting or aiding people in relaxing as it would possibly clear up bad memories from people's minds or ease their feelings or maybe they knew somewhat of its ability to relieve pain as it somewhat disconnects the mind from the body. These could all be reasons why they viewed alcohol like ale and wine as beneficial which is quite different from how we view it today kind of odd as they 
to be given as charity, but to them, if they view it as beneficial, as we see, it would not be odd as something given as charity. Though I have to say, those eight gallons of ale and four of wine given to the Franciscan friars might explain some of those weird drawings that we see in medieval manuscripts. If you are interested in reading either of these accounts yourself, or in other interesting facts that might be found in these accounts and ones like them, you may find this information in A Medieval Omnibus by Clifford Backman, and also in the Book of Marvels and Travels by Mandeville, found in the Amazon affiliate links below.